Greetings YouTube, this is William Demet Johnson for an extension on my NPC fanboyism with a character study Darth Vader D6 version Hopefully you all know who Darth Vader is If you don't know who Darth Vader is What the hell, what sort of rock have you been living under the last 40 years? <laughs> How do you have an internet? And not know who Darth Vader is. For all you non-Martians out there, you know who Darth Vader is. Tall, black armor, asthma problem, sounds like James Earl Jones, chokes people. He's the main adversary. The focus of, well, the old trilogy. And presumably the new, the prequel trilogy where... Well, mistakes were made, shots were fired. We don't talk about that anymore. But he's an awesome, he's a powerful, he's a good example of a powerful NPC and a big adversary you could have in your game. The big bad. And throughout 30 plus years of roleplaying, I have seen an awful lot of Darth Vader XPs. After all, all you need is a dude, some magic powers, black armor, and a bad attitude. He grubs up all the time. And Darth Vader is an interesting character in and of himself. He's a tragic character. We learn right off the bat, he is a fallen Jedi Knight. He was once one of the good guys, one of the best of the, of the goodest, one of the most noble of the noble, and now he is a creature of evil. And for those of you who have been living under a rock for the last 40 years, and somehow have avoided popular culture, yet still somehow have a YouTube account. <laughs> well, the entire focus of Star Wars becomes can Darth Vader be redeemed? And spoilers, he can't be. It happens. <laughs> Don't think I need to spoil a 40 year old movie. It's a 30 year old movie. So that's absurd. <laughs> but he's an interesting character. We know. We learn, we learn that he was this great Jedi Knight, this hero, this thing called the Clone Wars. And then he went evil, he got seduced to the dark side. So he's a tragic figure. And we know he's, he has, he faces off his son and there's all that drama and pathos and things going on there. All those heroic things. And if we do take the prequels into account, we do learn a bit more of his backstory, you know, how he was... Actually, a whiny idiot. But, you know, mistakes were made, shops were fired. Darth Vader is an interesting NPC. Yeah, like I said, you see either him or an XP of him turn up in an awful lot of role playing games. Whenever you want someone nasty, menacing, and a bit choky with the inferiors, Guy in Black Armor works wonders. I've seen him in fantasy games, I've seen him in science fictional games. See him in superhero games. He's everywhere. Doctor Doom is another type. But if we look at Star Wars D6 from West End Games, you get this game where the concept was you could play out A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi as an adventure trilogy, as a campaign. You could, of course, do your own adventures. They totally supported that as well. But there was this underlying conceit that if you really, really wanted to, you could swap out Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, R2-D2, C-3PO, and all, all the other little wombles of... or Chewbacca. <laughs> all the little wombles of Star Wars with your own characters and go and do the New Hope adventure. And that wouldn't require much, much of a fix. Until you got to... The lunatic stats they assigned Darth Vader, who are, now a bit of a background, D6 Star Wars ran off a stats plus skills system. Uh, you had a pool of dice, you had a pool of dice for each stat, and then you had extra dice for skills you were good at. So you could have, say, three dice in dexterity, which means all your dexterity skills ran off base of having three dice. 
So whether you want to dodge something or leap over a brit, leap over an obstacle, or shoot someone for blaster, you would start with three dice, three d6, and you'll try and beat a target number that was ranged from about three for spontaneous for incredibly easy to thirty, which is bodaciously hard and almost impossible. An example three would be waking up in the morning and get organizing your breakfast. An example of thirty would be shooting a torpedo down the exhaust shaft of a Death Star. A range of abilities. So you roll your dice, and if you've got skills, if you're skilled in something, say you're skilled in blasting, you'd have an extra you might have an extra dice or two in blasters. So when you blast someone, you roll your dexterity, you add your extra dice for your skills, and you might roll five dice, and then try and hit that difficulty number. And if you succeed, you either succeed or fail. It's a nice, simple system. So, and heroes in D6 Star Wars have an average of three dice in their stats. They might have a bit lower if they're not as good. Might have a bit more if they're really good. Uh, two dice is average for a person, for a human. So one dice is quite poor. Four dice is good. Five dice is outstanding. And then on top of that, you get your skills. So some of six dice or seven dice in the skill is absolutely amazing. Uh, top, top tier human ability. Darth Vader's skills are a little above even heroic character level that's okay he's the npc main adversary you can have your npc main adversary have a bit more power just naturally over the pcs after all he's going to be a bad dude or a bad dude s they're allowed to be slightly more powerful that's okay however when we get to his skills dude has 120 skill extra skill dice scattered amongst almost all the skills his average skill his poor skills are seven dice seven dice is almost as good as you can get and his maximum skills are 12 dice he is unbelievably powerful at well lightsaber and you choking you to death and or doing some or flying a spaceship 12 dice it's just <laughs> beyond insane and he has this in everything. Normal, heroic heroes start with an extra seven dice in their skills over their stats, which they have 18 dice in. Darth Vader has 120. That is beyond stupid, beyond ridiculous. And is just this an example of this overinflated NPC who is just beyond the rules, beyond any conception of how this character got here. Darth Vader with twenty dice over the PCs would be conceivable. He would still be a th he would still be a major threat. He would still could be easily the focus of an entire three adventure campaign to try and overcome. And you the part the PCs would have to work to overcome overcome that NPC. It wouldn't just be a walkover. Having twenty having ten dice over the PCs and skills is amazingly telling in that system. The NPC would be beating them at every turn. Darth Vader's 120. <laughs> he is... It is just beyond stupid. <laughs> and the same goes for the Force Powers. The Force Powers will run just like the stats and skills. You have a set of dice for them. You start... If you're, an, if you're a starting Jedi in Star Wars, e.g. a Luke Skywalker, you have one dice... In one of the three four skills and they improve they improve slowly so it's conceivable that at the end of return to the jedi a bit of a favorable tailwind that luke skywalker has two or three dice in each of the three four, four skills motherfucking darth vader d6 has 11 or 12 dice remember to achieve an impossible absolutely almost impossible thing requires a 30 so you can do it every time <laughs> you can get the impossible every time it's not even you know it's not even playing by the rules it's just someone going oh we'll just put huge numbers by this NPC, and then we'll trot it out and we'll just 
that's that. Oh, that's us. That's us. We're done. Uh, is it five o'clock on Friday night? Should we go to the pub? And this is where this problem comes from. It has been demonstrated to players and GMs that this is how you should make your NPCs. You see this in Dungeons and Dragons with their Elminsters, their Drizzets, their Cadgars. Cadgar in Dungeons and Dragons? I can't remember. You see this in Vampire with their Sullivan Danes, their tricked out princes. You see this in Battletech with their oh so cool and super noble and utterly unbelievably skilled Davian princelings. If you don't know what Battletech is, it's basically Game of Thrones in space with giant robots. Actually, Game of Thrones in space with giant robots. Oh, I'm playing some Battletech. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Let's get our Game of Thrones in space with giant robots on. But that's another thing. This is the source of the problem. This It has not started with Game Masters just assigning woefully stupid and impossible stats to NPCs and then wondering why PCs just can't face them or deal with them or overcome them or meaningfully interact with them. It's because the designers have done it. They have said, this is how you just do your NPC. This is how you make your Darth Vader. And it's wrong, and this is the source of the problem. Darth Vader is an interesting PC. You would want to have him in this game. He has been in many games. He turns up in every single game. You just and this tra the tragic fallen knight character is interesting. It's a good character, but he shouldn't be statted out to such a ridiculous extent. So that has been a character study. Um, if you want to, you can Google Star Wars D six. You can Google Vader D6 stats, and you can cringe at them as well. And you can see exactly where it goes wrong. Thank you.